All right. How's everyone doing tonight? Uh, thanks for joining tonight. Tonight's going to be kind of a little bit, as you saw in the thumbnail, a little bit of a kind of a recap of the trip that uh, that Jason and I did. So we had quite a bit of stuff going on. So I got a few things we'll kind of talk a little bit about tonight. But uh, before I get too far in, let's see who we had in the chat here real quick. We had a lot of a lot of pre-gamers. So Wags was in there first. Uh, Roy R. Does Things. Gary Franchi, how's it going? My boy Dave from CigarClub.com. Burben, John T. Jason, the mash and drum. Kelsey Dime. Kelsey, how's it going? DMC Kentucky. Christopher David, how are you, sir? Sugar Kitty. Old Man Joe. Um, Caitlin, and Caitlin, uh, tell your dad thanks for the uh, the samples. We We appreciate that, so um who else um cam how's it going i already said caitlin uh whiskey quest how's it going my man all right if i missed anybody else um i'll catch up to you here real quick nick okay all right so Without further ado, let me bring in, uh, I'll bring in tonight's guest and uh, he has a little something to do with the weekend that we had going on. So uh, let me, uh, let's do this here real quick and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get it going. There he is. Boom. The other man, the other, the other half of the mashing journey. So there's my guy. What's up, buddy? So thanks for jumping in tonight. So we, we kind of, this was a little uh, quick last minute type of thing. Jason's got something going on uh, tonight later on that he can uh, he can talk to you about here in a in a little bit. But I thought it would be kind of fun to not only let some of the uh, the patrons already know mostly what we had going on uh, on basically Friday and Saturday, Thursday. Well, yeah, basically Friday, Saturday, and uh, yeah, we had a lot of stuff. We had a lot of fun over the weekend. Had a lot of whiskey, <laughs> a few cocktails. Went to a few different places, uh, did a, a couple of uh, picks, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. So, uh, yes, first, before we kind of get going, so for us, so myself, my wife, Jason, his girlfriend, we all met down uh, in Kentucky this weekend. Uh, on our way down, we stopped by a um, little bit of an event that Bill Straub from Fourgate had going. So we kind of um, did a little bit of stuff there. This is where I was able to secure this bad boy. I can't get into too much of the details on it, but this is going to be the Kelvin Collaboration 3, which will be coming out in uh, the mid to late part of April, I believe he said. So I can't get into any of the tasting notes. What I will say is that for me, um, already tasting it, I think you guys are going to definitely want a bottle or two of this. It's a, it's a pretty special whiskey. It's one that's finished in, um, sherry and a rum cask. So a dual sherry and rum that was in the same barrel. And it's, it's a pretty special whiskey. What that sherry did, they pulled this thing at the perfect time as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, with that being said, um, so let's see, what did we have? So Friday morning, we went to Luxro. Jason and I went over to Luxro and he will show you, he's got a couple of the bottles and stuff that we, that we picked. Yeah. And, it, was a, it, was, it was a cool surprise for us because yeah, we didn't know how many, exactly how many barrels <laughs> we were pulling from. And then when we walked in, there were literally 12 bottles in front of us, 12 barrel samples to choose from uh, six Ezra Brooks and six rebels. Um, for those of you that don't know, the yell is not, is no longer affiliated with rebel. Uh, the yell has been silenced. It's been silenced. <laughs> yes, it has. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. The yell has uh, been silenced. And, and what's also cool is we got to do the picks for, uh, with, with Chad and Sarah from it's bourbon night. They were, they were there picking an Ezra and a rebel, uh, for their own channels. So we were kind of like, it was kind of cool. It's like Scott and I were like sitting across from Chad and Sarah and we're like, Oh man, what if we both pick the same barrel? <laughs> like what what happened? Yeah. 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 It was, yeah. We we had talked about how we were gonna decide whether it was gonna be like a wrestle off or or how the whole thing was gonna go. But fortunately, fortunately, we uh 
we all were pretty good about where we were at. You know, they wanted something different than, than we did. And, um, you know, I, I think we personally, I think we nailed it. Like, I think what we got for, for the patrons and, uh, shameless plug here coming. If you guys want in on the mash and journey picks, become a patron. I'm telling you, you guys, you guys are going to appreciate what it is we've got. And both of these picks that we've got, um, which won't be until what was it like mid to late September, maybe. So they just said September. Oh, September, sure okay, okay. Because of actually because of COVID, um, there are so many groups doing barrel picks to try to get their hands on you know some of these whiskeys, especially for 2021 starting off. Um, there's a lot of a lot of picking going on, uh, but I have the sample bottles right here. Here are the picks that we selected for both one Ezra and one Rebel Yell. Um, now, what's cool about the Rebel is that. This is actually going to be this is a six year old pick. Um, the rebel stuff isn't usually that old, you know. Close up here, the, the bottle if it focuses up on there. So you see June 17, 2015, uh, 126 proof. These will be proofed down to 120, but a 120 rebel yell weeder pick was uh, we did not expect. We thought they're going to be coming out at maybe 107, but we said, hey, they could come out at 120. We're like, hell yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We yeah, when we had it. yeah, this one was like a um you, I mean you guys most people know that Rebel and Luxro and Ezra, it's it's mainly Heaven Hill stuff. It hasn't transitioned MGP yet, obviously. So this is the older aging stuff that they have. So it does have like a nice little peanut note, but this is like chocolate, peanut butter, spice, and it's got a good like kind of balance of weeded notes as well. That's why we picked it. Um, and then the Ezra, this thing is like basically drinking. What do we say, Scott? Like freaking like a Swiss Miss hot chocolate. Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> so. I mean, it it was really good. That was one of the things that that was kind of a little bit common between the two that we had was that nice kind of you know chocolatey notes that we were getting on things. Um, I know. I would say with the with the weeder that we had, there was it was surprisingly how much chocolate and nice spice and everything there was, the complexity that it had. And the good part was with the barrels that we were selecting, obviously with them being barrel proof and and them only going down to 120, we weren't having to move very far off of either one of those. So that was the really the nice part about us being able to be very confident in what was um, what we were tasting was going to be very, very similar to what ultimately ended up in the bottle. Yeah, we added a couple drops of water to, to proof it down a little bit just to see. Yeah. They're not going to be cut down that much, which will be great, uh, just to see if we can get like the most, you know, the closest we could to what those uh, actual proof points might be and what it might taste like. So we let it sit. Um, we had two hours to go through 12 samples. Um, uh, uh, fortunately for us, uh, Chad and Sarah – they were kind of choosing between we had one rebel barrel in common and then the others were, you know, we were different. So we kind of had our own pick of those. Now the two Ezra barrels, we both kind of wanted the same barrels, <laughs> which yeah. was interesting. Um, so basically we just decided to choose one or the other and um, we're, we were going to maybe split it, but we figured it out just buy yours and you buy mine and we'll, we'll be good. So uh, yeah, it worked out. Uh, Scott, you better say hi to a cigar club. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> oh, did Scotty freeze? Scotty's frozen. Scotty, I think your wife is um is she is she streaming Netflix on you? Hang on, hang on a second. Oh, there you go. Well, oh, let me get back to this thing. You gotta kick the old Scott out. There you go. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, I don't know if the wife is is streaming or not on the thing. It kicked kicked me out of there for a second. Sorry I about said, that. Uh, I said you better say hi to uh, Cigar Club. <laughs> yes, I uh, no. So, in speaking of that, I'm glad uh, I'm glad you said something. So, yeah, tonight, uh, Dave and the guys over at CigarClub.com were nice enough to, uh, as you can see. So, Joseph Brazer, he's in there for this one. So, this would be a a cool one to to get in on. So, Dave was nice enough to uh, throw a um, a whole like normally this is a subscription only, but he's giving away tonight a uh, a Cigar Club Customs. Uh, package, which is a, a box of five uh, cigar or cigars that they basically go to the factories, have these things um, done exactly the way they want, figure out all the blends. So 
you're going to be getting something that's different and unique that uh, you wouldn't normally be able to get unless you were uh, part of the, the cigar club customs uh, subscription. So you'll, if you're a cigar person, it's definitely worth the, uh, the five bucks for uh, any, any opportunity to get into that. So uh, <laughs> look at Ritter, Ritter coming in. There you go. So good stuff. So let me go back real quick. I know Brazer was in there. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. So the Rebel's better than the Larceny Barrel Proof. Ah, uh, man. No, I wouldn't, was... I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go that. Oh, uh, the Larceny Barrel Proof. Yeah, I I would take it over the Larceny Barrel Proof. I mean, I here here's what I would say. Here's what I would say about that is that with that with those picks that we had, even where we were, you know, drinking these things, they weren't like overly hot at all. And I, in thinking back now, we had tried so much of it that nothing was really drinking at its proof. It was all drinking like sub 120. They were really easy to drink from what I remember. Well, and there's there was one that what was it, the first rebel we had that drank real hot? Yeah, or, well, or, and that might have that might have been just because our palates were a little bit shocked right away, too. Yeah, so. or, or it was just crazy spicy. Or or it was yeah, or it could have just been crazy spicy. But I mean, in terms of yeah. what that was, I mean, it was it was um it was nice from that standpoint, but you know. What I think what we did and what we ended up with was crazy. One of the here's what I'll say here's one that we had that I've never had anything like this before, but I've never tasted like a an earthy mushroom soup bourbon. Are before. you talking about you talking about the mulch bourbon? Yes, the mulch bourbon. Yeah, it was it was it was so different and unique. It was it was unbelievable. Yeah, this so. was yeah, this was batched in the Ezra in the Ezra selections. This was, um, it was like chocolate peanut, uh, hot chocolate, uh, dark fruit. And then we get to this Ezra Brooks one where you smell and drink this thing. It literally tasted like you were, it smelled like mulch and campfire and smoke. It was really, really weird. And it, it very much stood out. I, Chad and I were actually fans of it in the beginning because it was so different. Yeah. Um, Chad loved it a little bit more than I did. But when we added water to it, it made it really funky and, and worse. Uh, it would, Pat, yeah. Pat still kind of wanted to go with it. And I was like, I, you could take that one, dude. <laughs> yeah. It, it would have been, I mean, it would have been something kind of cool and unique to have, but in terms of like a, a true profile and something that I think that you'd want to drink, it, it was, it was nothing. It was nothing like that. It was just, and once you added any like water to it, it was, I mean, frankly, it was almost disgusting, but <laughs> anyway, uh, Nick Foles was asking, so is the, is what we were bottling, um, uh, let's see, MGP buying them. Will the bottle say Indiana instead of Kentucky? No, because this is basically all, all heaven Hill stuff right now. Yeah. This is still, they haven't transitioned anything to the MGP yet. This is, this is a six year, I mean, the rebel six years old, which, um, they're generally been between four and five. So we're going to get a nice older one, which I think kind of, you know, went hand in hand with what we were getting out of this, out yeah. of uh, the sample. I mean, it was just rich and complex and caramel heavy. It was great. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was the thing. It was nice and a little bit, a little bit on the, on the older side, which, you know, close to six years, I think is probably again, right around where those, you know, larceny picks are probably coming in at frankly, but I don't know, we're a little bit biased, but I mean, I think we're, we're, we're doing things that we think that, that, you know, obviously we like, but that are going to appeal to, what a lot of you guys are going to want to drink from what you would expect that bourbon profile to be. Basically. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we want to give you different, but we don't want yeah. to do like so different that it's nasty. No. <laughs> we're not going to get, yeah. We're not going to give you like rotten mulch and mushrooms. Yeah. yeah like, the, gonna... like, the, like the Ezra is just like the best of, I'm sorry, the rebel is like the best of what rebel offers, but all yeah. amped up to like all amped up to like 5,000. Whereas the Ezra the Ezra is really different, I will say, but different in a really good way. It's so much like chocolate and fruit going yeah. on. It's 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 great. We cannot wait for that one. This was the one. So when we're sitting, when we're sitting there, just to give you a little little inside, you know, tips on as to what we were doing. So as as we're going through, Jason's like over to my left. I'm kind of like at the head of one of the tables. Jason's over to my left, and uh, Chad and Sarah over to my right, a little ways away, and. Uh, <laughs> So we're tasting through things. And as I taste it, and I get locked into something that's good. I'm giving them like hand signals. I look like a catcher over here. I'm giving <laughs> yeah. them like, I'm giving him flashes of like, which ones like are good. And he's kind of, you know, giving me like the, 
the two two eyebrows up, two fingers down. It was like touched out, all these signals we had going on. We, we yeah, we're like basically like, you know, we're like doing this, <laughs> cross the letters. Yeah. We we looked like we were like in the band or something. Uh we were we were doing all kinds of things, but we're we're super happy with uh with and, what and this is. and this is why Scott and I are doing picks together, because when we went through the mall, we both immediately picked the same barrels. So yeah, we, we weren't we weren't far off. There was one more that he had that was good. I was like, I was clamoring so much to try to get committed to the ones that we were locked into. And it 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 just kind of worked out that way that we seemed to to be going after the ones that really Chad and Sarah didn't necessarily want. They were looking for a little more different than than we were. Not that yeah, it wasn't yeah, different. You know, you know, you know, Chad loves that nutty profile. So one of the Ezra's they picked, I think, was like drinking pure peanut butter. It, it was re- it yeah. was really straight up. It was it was so like peanut butter like dominant that it was one of those things where it, it kind of like overtook your your palate. It was so heavy on the peanut butter. Good if that's what you like, but they wanted something that was a little bit more uh, on that side. So. Yeah, I'm probably gonna. Um, I might give away a couple samples of these on an upcoming uh, live stream just for people to get like a little preview of yeah. the Lux Rose. So, because I have them, they were they were kind enough to reseal these, which was kind of nice of them. So, yeah. I might give away some samples of that, so you know, a couple people can you know maybe able to try them before uh, before they become available. Again, they're not going to be available until September, unfortunately. Yeah, that's the that's kind of the the bummer with with doing these picks is that you know we did this thing you know, here in March and now it's not going to be available until September, but that's kind of the name of the game really for the most part. I think the only one that maybe we'll be able to do fairly quick and get kind of quick will, will be the, the Russell's pick, I believe, right? The Russell, the Russell's and the Rye pit and the Rye three will generally come out around April. So yeah. Okay. So I, so think, I think we'll have those two coming out then. And then uh, our Woodenville pick, I think is going to be coming sooner than later, hopefully. So. Yeah, and we should be getting the samples for for that, like yeah, literally any, yeah, any, any, day. any day now. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, Ethan said you guys were my ride to Kentucky. You forgot to pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> was that Next was night. that Ethan with his thumb up yeah. on the side of the road? And I'm yeah, sure. uh, maybe we saw you there. We just uh, we left you there. We apologize. Yeah. So then, so then, uh, all right. So that was our day uh, Saturday. Um, I'm sorry, Friday, <laughs> and then we kind of spent the rest of the day. We went to a brewery. Uh, um, which was great. Had some food. Then we just kind of walked around Bardstown and checked out some of the little shops around there. Uh, yeah, made made some made some purchases. Looks like over your left shoulder, it looks like you made a couple yeah, of purchases. I got this. Uh, I got this down home toasted barrel finish, but this is an MGP rye that's toasted. Um, now you guys know, like toasted generally isn't my thing, but I love the Michter's toasted rye for the most part. Mm-hmm. But to try an MGP that's toasted, I thought that's different enough for me to pull the trigger on. Um, and that's what's that's what's in my glass right now. Also yeah. got it was kind of a rye weekend. I also got my bottle of Fourgate, thanks to a uh, Todd Ritter in the chat. This is the new uh Fourgate Ruby Rye Springs. Uh Scott, I think you did a, a, a review on this already, right. and so did and so did Bourbon Bites. I think Clip yep. did uh Clippy did also. Yep. Um, my review is coming uh up of this and I, I got nothing but good things to say about this thing. It's it's a yeah. it's it's unique. It's different. Again, I love those different whiskeys. Yeah. But if you if you're a fan of Midwinter's Night's Dram, this is like Midwinter's Night's Dram on steroids. Yeah, they they do a night. I mean, that's that's one of the thing is that you know, like with Fourgate, you know, they 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 start out with quality whiskeys and then blend from there. So or mingle whatever you want to call it, but. Uh, D, uh, DC, the, the Russell's pick is going to be a G, a G pick, warehouse G. So, um, yeah. So then, yeah, from there, so we had, um, oh wait, what, what was the question that you just had up there? Sorry. Um, yeah. So we, I think I had to answer this. This is just going back a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, off profile can be good, but you don't want it too off profile. No, not to the point where it's too funky. I mean, there's. Like I don't know about you, Scott. Like like for us, when we were talking about doing picks, we were looking for um, for both uh, something that's you know like that's like the best of what we want from that profile, yeah, uh, or 
something that's off profile, but it's just really like amped up flavors of what we're used to. Maybe more chocolate, yeah. maybe more caramel, whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, but we also want you guys to like enjoy it. You know, we don't want to pick anything that's going to be so off profile that, you know, if, if someone, you know, if most of you guys taste it, you are be like, what the hell is this shit? Um, yeah. It's like, oh, it's really off profile. We're going to be like, well, this is really off profile. And if you guys keep picking this shit, I'm not buying any more picks. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's and that's the thing. I mean, we're we're trying to get the the best of of what it is that we can get from those barrels, and I think we're really trying to do a good job on that. Yeah, yeah, Ruby. Yeah, Bourbon uh, Bourbon Bites said Ruby Rice Springs was his favorite four gate. Yeah, it's um, there's something special going on in that bottle. I mean, it's out. I I mean, I mean, not to say it is out now though, isn't it? Like you could buy it on. Yep, yep. Yep, you can you can get that now. I, yeah, I think it's on Steelbox and what's what's the other what's the other site it's on? Bur Bourbon Outfitters, but they're That's all sold. Out. They're all sold out, unfortunately. Oh, already online they're sold out. Yeah, so you can't oh, even Jesus. get you can't even get batch eleven anymore. It's all it's all sold out. You can maybe find them somewhere. I don't know somewhere down the down the road, but. Um, Damn, dude, that sucks. Okay. Yeah, it it, it kind of does. So well, this is what happens when people see a port finish rye. <laughs> well, yeah, and that was that was kind of the the thing with that, and it did, it, and it flew off the it flew off the shelf uh, right away. So I better I forgot I need to uh, write down everyone's name who got entered into tonight's thing because I don't see I don't see any mods in here right now that can keep track of it. But oh yeah, you better go back, dude. Yeah, I am. I think so, Joseph, while, so while you're doing that, uh, what else? And then so okay, yeah, so then, we got yeah, we got to Bardstown. We went to Bardstown Bourbon Company, had a yeah, hell so of a time. So that was so that was Saturday, and we had a hell of a time there. Um, we had an amazing lunch. I mean, I don't know if any of you guys have had be able to have the food there, but um, you know, Scott has cultivated a good relationship with a lot of the leaders there, Danny, um uh and you know a couple of the other guys and it's you know we got there we got to we got to try something very unique i don't know if, are we allowed to talk about that one sure yeah you think so okay so yeah, but, yeah i mean it's it's coming up i think they're getting ready to do it oh, in, that's right it's in a couple weeks. weeks yeah a couple weeks so if you guys are familiar with the barstown bourbon company pfeiffer pavit uh release which is the I believe it's a 12 year old Dickel that's finished in a Cabernet cask for uh, a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So, so if you've ever been to Michter's or any other distilleries where they allow you to fill your own bottle from a barrel, uh, this is the program that Bart's on bourbon company is going to be instituting in the next, uh, in about two weeks. So, and the barrel that they're starting with is this Pfeiffer Pavit, but the, the difference is that what makes it different is that this has been sitting in a Cabernet cast for 44 months. Yeah. So this is like three years plus. I mean, it's insane. It, it was crazy. It was crazy. I mean, we we yeah. tasted it and it was, again, I know we had mentioned stuff before about those like chocolates. It was so much like dark fruit, like like a, um, what am I thinking of? Like a, like a concentrate where you get that really rich, yeah. fruit aspect it was it was delicious yeah so th you, they're gonna allow you to go in to barstow bourbon company and fill your own i you know he didn't say what the price was i would imagine this would probably be 200 bucks or more because it's so ultra aged um i'm not and it's a fill your own bottle i think there's some customization you can do the bottle as well but he didn't really get into too many details on that but the fact that you can fill your own bottle and we got to try this yeah. stuff now my girlfriend who is not a whiskey drinker at all. <laughs> this thing this was a hundred, a hundred and what? 1516 proof. I think yeah, he said, it around was, that. It was. Yeah. She drank this stuff. Like it was fucking water. Just boom. Yeah. This is, she said, this is freaking amazing. I could drink this. I'm like, great. My girlfriend has such a bougie palate. I can't even handle it. It was, um, so. it was exactly, it was exactly that. Okay. So, uh, Trev's keeping track. So, okay. Thanks Trev. I appreciate oh, cool, it. Cool. Cool. Trev. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, so so yeah, she got labeled. She got labeled the whole night, kind of bougie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were calling calling her out for her bougie palette. So uh, yeah, so yeah, yes. I mean, she love. I mean, it's it's good. It's like drinking just like the darkest fruit candy, chocolate, like Man. toasted sesame seeds. All these crazy flavors on that thing. It was so complex. Um, we got some signed barrel heads. 
Uh, Caitlin Brubaker, who's in the chat. Yep. Yep. She's she's one of my Patreons, and she uh, she showed up there with her dad because uh, you know they watched the channel, and I got to meet with them for you know a few minutes and take a photo, and I mean, man, it was such a good time. And then we just after that we just did some uh, <laughs> we did oh, and I'll let you talk about the room. Oh yeah. So okay. So <laughs> be, be, before I go too far into that, so what I'm going to show you guys here in a second, just to kind of give you guys a little idea. We kind of, Jason and I were chatting while we were having lunch about maybe putting something together in fall-ish as long as things continue to go the way they are and things improve with all the COVID stuff. But we think it'll be a very, well, we're going to try to make it a special thing. And we don't have all the details yet. It was just kind of a little bit of a um, little brainstorming thing that we were doing. After we got in this thing and saw what it, what it, what it was, was that we felt it'd be nice to be able to share this to put a little something special together. So here is, um, I'm going to show you here. Where is that? So this is, um, this is the room right here. And if you can imagine that right there, all the way, all the way around, except with just one door entering the place from, from floor to ceiling. And those guys that you see there, are pretty tall guys. So, I mean, it's got some of the most epic, um, <laughs> some of the most epic bottles of whiskey that you'll yeah. ever see. Like, yeah, Scott, Scott, throw that, throw that. Um, so if you see in the back, all the way on the right, I mean, they have the full old crow chessman set. Yep. Um, if you look at the second girl from the left, the one with the headband. In front of her, I mean, they have every William Lou Weller, George T. Stagg, old uh, old Van Winkle that you can think of, just standing and like sitting there in front of her. Um, they have some of the original Van Winkle Rye releases. I mean, these are really pricey pours, obviously, but just to kind of be, I think the oldest whiskey they had in there was from uh, 1897 or some shit. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. It was yeah, it was. It was pretty. It was pretty awesome. So you you probably know these guys. Taking, taking, taking pictures here in the room and all that, but yep. Yep. it was, um, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a, an awesome room. And as you can see, let me just go back real quick. This kind of like boardroom table, it maybe it held like, I don't know, 12 people or something like that. So our, our thought was to maybe get a nice event together, um, you know, kind of collaborate with, with Bardstown Bourbon Company, maybe put something together about getting some some special pours, either a lunch or dinner, something along those lines, and uh, really, um, really be able to have a, a good time with it. So that was kind of the the idea behind. Yeah, I, I think that. what we want to do that that kid that room they say fits ten people. Yeah, it was like 10, 12, something like that. So I think if COVID kind of finally goes away by fall, Scott and I want to put together a you know, like kind of a, a like a Barstown Bourbon Company like package trip. So you, yeah. you know, so anybody will get eight people to come down and they could be a part of that. We're going to pick some pretty epic uh, whiskeys from that room so we can all do a tasting, have some lunch yeah. and just hang out. And then, you know, maybe maybe we can kind of, you know, bounce around to a couple of other distilleries, make a weekend out of it. So I think that's what we're trying to we're planning on doing uh, in September, hopefully. So, yeah, yeah, it could be. uh could be a, a fun time. So, um, all right. So here we go. <laughs> Unipoke. <laughs> Unipoke. And he's totally right. I had the shrimp and grits. <laughs> oh yeah, we had we. I had the yeah, I had the shrimp and grits. It was badass, dude. It was yep. the thing. I even told him like we were there. We had a lot of appetizers, and I wasn't leaving that table until I had the shrimp and grits. I can tell you that. So that was just the way it was. So yeah, yeah. Old man Joe. Apparently, the room only fits ten. Um, yeah, well, it was like 10, 12, something like yeah, that. Yeah, 10 or 12, something along that line. So we'll see how many we can get. Uh, we'll, we'll see. But I mean, it's super, it's super limited, obviously. It's not, it's not a huge room. It's just, it's, I mean, it's just filled no. to the gills with whiskey. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what I was, what I was also amazed at was, and, and I don't even know, cause we were there. We, fortunately, we were like the, the CEO of the company let us in the, in the room and, <laughs> there's no glass in front of it. You can literally touch all of that stuff. I don't think they really want you to. I did, but it probably made them a little bit nervous, but still it was, it, it was just incredible as to, you know, the whiskeys that were there and the history that was in those bottles is that, 
whoever it is that ends up doing this stuff that we do, we're going to try to get some really nice things um, going. So, yeah. all right, Scotty. So what do you, Hey, what's up, Matt, Matt from Whiskey Crusaders. By the way, Matt and I, Matt's uh, Whiskey Crusaders is coming live on my channel tomorrow for one of the most, mo one of the most epic Irish whiskey nights to ever be had on a whiskey tube channel. I'm just warning you guys now it's going to be nuts tomorrow night. So tune in for that. Yeah, it'll be a good one. And then, uh, Next Monday, Monday and Tuesday, we're we're doing something. One on his channel, and we're gonna go through some of the stuff that he has that he sends me, and then he's gonna give me a little a little challenge on mine for uh, for Tuesday night. So it should be it should be pretty good. So yes, there he is, my man DC showing up. Team Hamhock, baby. He wants to rent a limo and all drive down to Dickel. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe may, maybe uh. We were chatting a little bit about it today. Maybe a, maybe something from Dickel coming down the road. We don't know yet, but if you if you haven't, go check out Jason's video that he dropped today. It'll it'll make you want what. Uh, yeah, the fifteen year. Listen, uh, I just want to make it clear: those fifteen year picks also come in at like eighty proof or forty percent ABV too. So look at the bottle before you buy it. It's got to be the higher proof ones. The higher proof one that's like fifty two point four ABV. Are, are those things are hitters. Yeah. So. Yeah. It'll be a good one. Now, remember for our picks, if, if anybody wants in on those, you've got to be a patron of myself or Jason. So, uh, all right, Scotty, what do you, what do you want to, what do you want to open tonight? What do you want to drink? All right, right now? So I'm going to, why don't we do this? I'm going to open up, uh, I'm you haven't, up. you haven't had the Barstown four yet. Have no, you? I haven't. So I didn't, I didn't even have it while I was at the distillery. I meant to try to get some of it, but, uh, you know what? Let's, um, let's open her up here. It's, uh, yeah, dude, have it. Crack, crack so we'll see, see what we've got here out of this deal. This one was kind of cool because the uh, the two people or uh, two of the main people that were responsible for this one, um, Nick Smith and Stu. Stu's like the head chef there, and then yep. Nick Smith is the uh, is the new head or master distiller for Bardstown Bourbon Company, along with uh, Steve Nally, uh, that they put all this stuff together. But yeah, we got to talk to. Stew for a little while at the table and um yeah really really awesome dude so it, it was nice that he came over and talked to us a little bit so absolutely all right, all right let's see what we've got here i mean i've gonna, i've i'm, I've gonna, always, I'm gonna stick with this toasted barrel because now that's opened up a little bit these toasted barrel finishes really need to open up i think a little bit yeah they they really they really do so it's just one of those things you know same my experience as well with toasted barrels that too many people judge them like right off the neck or even after a very short period of time. It just really doesn't do those things uh, any any justice at all. So Mr. Whiskey Shits coming in with a $24.99, going in big. Thank you, sir. Nice. What are you giving away tonight, man? One cigar club, custom yep. box, five cigars, and a discovery batch for an early time sample. Nice. Yeah, nice I'll pack. open this one a little bit too. So, I mean, I know, and I picked up a, a few of these. So maybe down the road, I'll, I'll do a, a giveaway of, of one of these as well. But we don't get it in our area. And it seems like it's fairly limited in terms of the distribution. Well, so, also, yeah, it's not distributed everywhere. And Sazerac just bought that brand. So we don't know what's going to happen to it. Yeah. So, so it's, probably, it's probably good. It's probably good that you bought a lot of them. Yeah, I bought, I don't know, like maybe four or five of them actually. So um, I wanted it. And then my idea of buying those was to do this as a little bit of a, a giveaway. So I'll, I'll do that, um, you know, on a, on another live stream. So, all right, let me see what we've got here with the the discovery. Oh, boy. So that has that 15-year-old beam in it. That's 17 and a half. That, you know, that, my, that. My, my, first, my first thought on this is there's like a really nice um, – like a uh, uh, like pie crust note. There's something that's very something that's very um, like doughy about it with a nice spice, like almost like a like kind of being like a apple pie or something. I bet if this bad boy was warm, it would smell like an apple pie. <laughs> like a hot one though, a hot one. Uh, any thoughts on Doc Swinson's local store? Got a triple cask, a Solera, and the fifteen. Um, the 15 year is the, that's that, that's that, uh, if that's batch six, I believe, then that's the, that's that beam mash bill. So that's the Jim beam. Uh, it is, yeah. it is good. It's definitely good stuff for, for a 15 year. 
Um, well, and this, like when you, and like with this one specifically, I mean, look at the ages. I mean, that what they have in this discovery for, so this at the distillery I got for 130 bucks. So when you think of what these blends are in today's day and age for 130 bucks is pretty impressive. So it's, it's 55% 13 year, 37% 15 year and 8% 10 year. So 91% of this is 13 and 15 year bourbon, um, all, all Kentucky stuff. So different mash bills, of course, uh, which is something that they're, they're famous for, for doing, um, you know, so when we talk about you know, I guess value and all of that in terms of what this is and, and the, the percentages of this, I guess I, I hate to say a hundred and thirty dollar bottle is value, but it it kind of is. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, a lot of people kind of scoff at 130 bucks because they feel like it's coming from a newer distillery, not realizing what's exactly blended in it. I mean, when you look at the side, the only thing I wish Bartstown would do a little bit better on the front of the label is put like the number of the the batch on there. Yeah, yeah, there's none of I yeah, mean, unless, you, unless you turn the bottle on the side, you know, and they'll tell you four or three or whatever batch it is. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's right, right above the, the mash bills and percentages and, yeah. and all of that. But, but I mean, to, to, you know, for all that ultra age whiskey that's in there for 130, I mean, yeah, it's... we, we buy younger, we buy people who buy six year MGP for 250. So. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, I mean what you're getting here is all right. like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy. So, I mean, I think what you're getting there in terms of, you know, value and all that, it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty nice bourbon, I would say. So, um, so this is the down home toasted barrel finished rye. So this is actually an MGP. This is a six year MGP, 112 proof that's toasted. I figure this is unique enough for me to pull the trigger on it. I wanted to taste the toasted MGP. Mm -hmm. uh, this was about a hundred bucks, ninety five, ninety nine, and um, man, these toasted barrels, especially on a rye. I mean, this is this yeah. the MGP now is a little bit different. It's a little bit spicier, but you're still getting like the really sweet, like toasted marshmallow, yeah, graham cracker type note. But I will say, there's something different I'm getting on the finish of this. That I don't get on the Michter's toasted, which is a black licorice note. Hmm. Yeah, it comes, at the, it comes at the very, very end. It's like a little hint of black licorice. Yeah, Donald's looking forward to tomorrow night. You should. Oh, be. I'm, sure, I'm sure he is. Yeah, <laughs> the Irish Yoda. Yeah, that's the Irish whiskey Yoda right there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, I was. I saw that. I I thought about. I thought about buying one of them. I've got the toasted barrel bourbon, which is again, a uh, MGP as well that they're sourcing from. I know they did some Barton stuff, but I think those two of the toasted barrel are both MGP to ride. Yeah, the, so. the, I, I'm, I'm kind of liking this a little bit better than the Michter's uh, off the bat, but I mean, unfortunately, well, I mean, it's not like the Michter's toasted barrel is very available either. Yeah. But this isn't available this might have more. Uh, you might have a chance of getting this more o o over the Michters, I think. Um, yeah, I, I don't think. I think it's very. I think it's very limited distribution. I think down home is basically Kentucky and maybe Tennessee. I don't think they go outside of that. They don't do a lot of. Um, uh, they don't do a lot of marketing or anything along those lines. But they, they, they do a they do a good job. I, I think it's one of those brands where. You know, if, if they could get a little bit more steam behind them and really get it out to people, I think, you know, more people would really understand, um, you know, about kind of what it is they're doing. You know, again, the pricing can can sometimes be a, a bit of an issue. But, you well, know, I mean, you got they had, you know, they, they're down home. Um, their regular bourbon, which I have somewhere. That yeah. was that was a, that was sourced Barton. Yep. Uh, yep. And still it was about 100 bucks. And we're seeing a lot of source Barton you know, in the 160 range. Yeah. So when you look at, but this is what I appreciate when a source, you know, when a company that's doing source whiskeys, you know, like Fourgate down, like they're just doing different yeah. things to make it a little bit more appealing. 
Well, yeah. And like you said, I mean, that not only is that now taking, whether it's MGP or Barton, but now there's other expense of taking and dumping, putting those into other barrels that are, that are toasted or whatever it may be. So there's all of these expenses. So, you know, it's more than just where the whiskey comes from. It is, it's like what they're doing to it. Like Forgate, I know they're, they're pricey, but the, if, if everyone really truly understood what it is that they do and how they, they get so many things, um, or just all, all of what's involved to get that stuff in all these different barrels where they source things from it, it's, it's absolutely crazy. So a yep. big league bourbon thanks. Yeah. We like to do this stuff too. I mean, th this was why I wanted to do this with just a little bit of a recap let you guys, you know, know a little more about like what it was we're doing, why we're doing some of the things that we're, that we're doing. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're looking forward to, to sharing as many of these bottles with, uh, with people. I don't think most of this stuff, to be honest, is going to get outside of, um, outside of the patrons. So again, like I said before, if you, if you want a shot at, uh, any of these bottles that we're doing picks of, you know, consider becoming a, uh, a patron of, of either one. Yeah, we're so from the Ezra and Rebel pick standpoint, they said they generally get anywhere between 200 to 210 bottles per barrel. Yeah. So 200 people. I, I'll tell you what, though, you know, it's not like, you know, Scott and I don't have like a ridiculous amount of patrons. So I believe, you know, if there are some people that want to skip it, we may have some chances of some people outside getting getting some, but I think only having you know uh, you know people are going to want one of each of them because we're gonna we're gonna make some serious tater stickers uh, that are going to go along for both of them so you have a little pair so <laughs> as you know as you know kind of get you got to get creative with the tater stickers uh, but yeah then so then let's see so then Saturday which is our last day there because we were leaving Sunday morning um, after Bartstown Bourbon Company we hit Heaven Hill. Uh, to yeah. check Heaven Hill out, they didn't really have anything there, unfortunately. No, that's that people line up in the morning and get yeah, all that people stuff line up. If, you, if you're going to Kentucky and you want to score anything special from Heaven Hill, you got to get there real early because people line up in the morning at yeah. the Heritage Center to get anything that's you know allocated. So I yeah. think they said they had Elijah Craig 18, they had Elijah Craig barrel proof, uh, they had Larceny barrel proof, and then they had the uh, the grenades, and those all you know, those were all gone so. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I picked up a bottle of Pikesville because it's becoming a little bit harder to find around my area. So I yeah. grabbed one of those. Um, well, you, uh, then, you we went, then we went to Willet to, sh to show the ladies the bougie, the bougie place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I, I mean, I, not to, not to bash on Willet, but I'll tell you, I mean, when you go there, <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally, it's literally shelves of stuff that you can go to like your local, you know, liquor store i mean it's just there's nothing the only thing they ever have is their four-year like rye for whatever 65 bucks or whatever was 70 bucks and it's just well they had they had a lot of the four-year rye there which was yeah you know if you've never listen the four-year rye from well it's very solid um it's definitely a good bourbon i mean a good rye whiskey um but yeah then the rest of the selection is like you know noah's mill rowan's creek yeah, uh, pure Kentucky, Johnny Drum, all the kind of standards. Um, you again, if you want a ch chance of like a purple top bourbon or something like that with Willet, same thing. You got to get there like at the ass crack of dawn to get a yeah. bottle. Yeah, um, yeah. Because even even when we were at Heaven Hill, I think Jason had asked or whatever, and I I didn't see that he was up there. I went up to the lady and asked if they had any of the uh, any of the grenades. She just smiled and laughed at me. She like literally never even told me no. She just smiled. I'm like, okay, I, I get it. I'm, I've yeah. been involved. I'm, in this I'm, long I'm picking up. I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's exactly what it was. She's like, yeah. hey, it, hey, idiot, you're like the 500th person. She's like, why don't you just ask for Pappy while you're here? Yeah, and then we went to. Uh, well, then, then we stopped at. Let's see. Yeah, we will went to Willet. Um, we were gonna try to sneak into the Four Roses bottling area, but we got out of we got out of Bart's on Bourbon Company too late. We were sitting there eating and drinking too many cocktails. Yeah, yeah um, we, were, we were there probably three hours. So. Yeah, and then we uh, – oh, there you go. Down Home is doing store picks of the toasted, different char levels. The bourbon is too young, I think, but the rye and wheat whiskey are really good. I've heard the wheat toasted is are really good too. Yeah. Yeah. If they, if they would have had the wheat too, I probably would have grabbed one of those too. 
Yeah, he he's I mean they're they're trying to do different things and stuff. So I mean this would be another thing to kind of reach out to at some point if if it becomes something that's a demand type of thing and we want something that's different. These are some of the brands that will give us something different. We're working on maybe at some point trying to do something with with Forgate. We understand it's going to be ex, you know expensive. Um, we probably won't have nearly as many to offer or anything along those lines. So we're going to try to get some different things mixed in for, for everybody there. There's not many things we've left off the table, off the table so far. Um, other than maybe a, a whistle pig and, a yeah, and we, a, a we, Elijah turned, we, we turned down a, a regular Elijah Craig and a whistle pig. Cause eh. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I I shit on Whistle Pig enough. I think it'd be a little contradictory if I'm like, yeah. hey, we did a pick. <laughs> well, and I and I think the and I think the Elijah Craig that we were gonna do wasn't even I don't even think we were even gonna really have much of an opportunity to do anything with it. It was just kind of slap our name on it. We didn't really want to go down that road. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, Sean Kane, do something with Fourgate. We're we're hoping to. But the, the problem is though with Fourgate, I mean that's a two hundred plus bottle. So yeah, that would that would probably be a very small bottle run for us because, you know, I mean, we're not going to put out a shit ton of bottles that are two hundred dollars plus because, yeah, that's an expensive bottle for a lot of people. So it, it really is. So well, Sean, Sean was nice enough to send me before a uh, a sample of the of the of the bars on the discovery batch four. So I, then I picked one up. I wasn't even sure they were going to even have any at the distillery. And fortunately, they they did. So he he beat me to the punch. But. I, I appreciate that. Oh, so. Whiskey Mountain. Whiskey Mountain's had a really good idea. Adriana said if they do a weeded uh, toasted barrel, we should call it Wheaties. Wheaties, yeah. That could be a good one. Was the uh, Were we actually talking about stickers for the Rebel and Ezra picks? Of the yeah, we're going to do, some, do something – you know, double together. We'll see yeah. how that goes. Yeah. yeah, it'll be it could it could be something good where if you've got one bottle, you're gonna need the second. Trust us. <laughs> so um, it's gotta they go hand in hand a little bit, but um, um I'm gonna try to think. Oh yeah, so then after so then we went back to Bartstown after Willet, um, and then we went shopping because we kind of noted all the bottles we want to get. Um uh then we went to then Scott the same, so the blind pig it's called in Bartstown. Yeah. <laughs> and they, um, I got to tell you guys, they had a 10 year Russell's Reserve single barrel that was one of the original, like the first Russell's Reserve run that were yeah. 10 years old. He had one sitting on his counter, but it was like 625 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was like a 175, I think. Did you say that? No, no, it was a 750. Are the, you uh, sure? The Eliza Craig 12 was a one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. And he had, yeah, he had a huge pirate bottle of the Eliza Craig 12 year, oh. 175. I don't remember how much was that one, Scott. I don't remember. I don't thought it. I thought it was like four fifty or five hundred bucks or something. Yeah, I was so actually. I was, I was actually contemplating that one. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was crazy. Well, I knew when I saw the uh, the wild or the uh, yeah. Well, it was some some Russells or something like you just mentioned. I when I saw that, I'm like, oh boy, yeah. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Jason's uh, going crazy seeing that thing sitting there. So yeah, no, I'll it was see. it was good. I think that's a good idea. Um, uh, who said uh, Shane Long? He said someone needs to do a budget barrel pick hitter like the early times or Wild Turkey One Hundred and One. The problem is though, those are those aren't single barrels. Those are those are batched. Um, yeah. So the single barrel One Hundred and One is is essentially Kentucky Spirit from uh, from Wild Turkey. Um, early times, uh, you know, I don't think I've seen a single barrel from them, but no. <laughs> it's an, it's yeah. an idea. Yeah, I don't even know what the yeah, I've never seen anything like that. And there's a lot of them. They did would just refuse to do it. They're just they never could create the the same profile and their whole thing is just their their batch consistency. They don't want to deviate from it. So some of them there is no opportunity to do it. So yeah, so so Caitlin, so Caitlin Brubaker, uh yeah, we went to the blind pig speak speakeasy as well. That's what Scott found. It's right around the corner yeah. from the blind pig. Yeah. And, we went, and you got to like call before you go in. It, it was crazy because you walk up yeah. and it just is like this sign sitting out front and it just, <laughs> it's very limited detail. All the, all the windows are all blacked out on the thing. It's just a brick building with a door Yeah, and you can't see in this place. And it's like call for details or something about like the speakeasy. So I called and it's just like a lady there and <laughs> she asked me my name. And she told me to call back at like at five thirty and give her my name again. 
And I, I did. She was very short about everything. There's just hanging up the phone. There's no goodbye or hello or any of that stuff. <laughs> so I go and tell these guys they were looking at something. I said, all right, I think we might be able to get in this place. So I go back over, call them, and the lady just answers the phone. I said, oh, this is this is Scott calling again for like the 530. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> the phone just hangs up, and the door unlocks and opens. I'm like... I guess we're going in. So in we go, in we go, and it's just like yeah, behind this this like little building, it looks like you're we're in this little speakeasy, and they had a lot of they had a lot of bourbon, of course you'd expect that. Oh yeah, I got to um, I got to show uh, the picture of, with Brewer. Oh yeah, that was a, that was a good one. So Brewer uh, Scott's dog Brewer was he was keeping up with us. He's a little old boy, but he was yeah. keeping up. Uh, but he was pretty tired at the end of the, the day and the speakeasy because that was kind of the end of our day. And then, like, at the end, he just decided to – he had enough and just wanted to sit on Scott's lap. And there he is. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wish – I was just sitting – yeah, he had it. We were, we were to sit at this little table in the very far back corner. <laughs> he, he did. He, he had enough. So I should have downloaded the one with you. You had even a better one with him. Yeah, so. here's uh, this is and this is what this is the picture. This is the face that Brewer gives you, if you know if he knows that you're talking about him. <laughs> he, gives, he gives you this face right here. Here it comes. Oh, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. He's like, "What you talking oh, about, wow. Willis?" Yeah, he's like, "Come." He's like, <laughs> "I love that damn dog." Oh yeah. my god. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a little. Uh, I'm gonna give him a quick little. Uh, Quick little cameo here. We'll sh we'll show you the real show you the real thing. I'll get the old I'll get the old man and uh, we'll give him a little quick uh, little quick cameo. So, all right, all right. Here he is. I was coming in. Yeah. All right. Come here. Come here, old man. Come here. There he is. There's the guy. There's the boy. There he is. Oh. Look at that spot. Look he's at gotta, that face. He's got to he's got to wear like a little. Uh, Got wear like a little diaper once in oh, a while. Oh, the He's poor kidding. guy! Don't show his diaper. Oh man, well, whatever. I can't help it. Just <laughs> it's the way it's the way it is. A little way it is a little time. So <laughs> it's it's kind of like no no different than a bunch of humans. You know, we 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 go out the way we come in, pissing and shitting ourselves. So <laughs> anyway, so something, something, great. To, something to look forward to, folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you guys if you guys were looking for uh, like elderly uh, getting old advice, you came to the right stream tonight. So that's <laughs> that's what you have for to that's what you have to look forward to. Shit and pissing yourself, changing your own diaper. So so yeah, yeah that's I'm, I'm yeah I'm, I'm into yeah. What was that awful bourbon that we had at the at the speakeasy? Oh man, what the heck was that? The, the bartender oh, that, was like, that, oh, Je that was that Jefferson stuff. The bartender's like, you really gotta, you really gotta try uh, that thing. guy. That guy didn't. That guy didn't know shit. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the Jefferson. Well, it was the Jefferson's Cabernet finish, but we got okay. that to we got that to see if the if the ladies like that. But remember the hundred twenty proofer that just tasted like salted peanuts. Oh, oh, that was um, that was the um, hang on a second. Was it was was it like something creek or oh yeah fern creek fern creek yeah fern fern creek and it yeah. was literally it was literally like old like peanut shells if it if it wasn't Jim Beam I would be very surprised yeah it was it was awful we were like what the hell is this we actually blended our <laughs> Jefferson's we put our Jefferson's uh, Cabernet finish in there. To like mellow it out, we made kind of a nice blend. It was like peanut butter and jelly. It was. It ended actually ended up being pretty pretty darn good. It could have been a peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> I actually wish it was like this uni unipoke. It wasn't. It wasn't really. It wasn't really like that. You just have to call a number and they let you in. It wasn't like so. Like I wanted like a secret knock, or you have to like yeah. go through. You have to like uh, I don't know, like try to find like a basement door and like go in, and then it's downstairs. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, there wasn't. We we have one of those by us. Um, it's called the um the safe house. And it's yeah. an interesting kind of place. And it used to be an old gangster place. It's like down an alley, and you've got to go in this like little side door, and you have to know the the password or the saying. And yeah. if you don't, and and everyone who's down in the bar sees everyone in the lobby 
And if you have the wrong password, they make you do crazy shit in order to get in the thing, to get in the place. So everyone sees you doing crazy stuff and know you didn't know the password. And then once you get in, you get down, everyone claps for you and cheers for you because they know you're an idiot and everyone watched you on TV. So it's, it's kind of a, kind of a different place. So. All right, Scotty, well, I'm going to jump off. I have to go to my next stream. We're drinking. I put the link uh, down in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, I mean, if you guys want to stay with Scotty or you're running over the junkies, whatever you want to do, but I'm heading over to uh, John and Jay over at Weekly Whiskey. They were kind enough to send me a uh, sample of Red Breast 27. So we're going to be having some Irish whiskey kind of kicking off uh, St. Patty's week. So uh, what can I say, buddy? Cheers. It was a fun yeah. weekend. And uh, I'll, I'll, we'll talk soon, my friend. That sounds good. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll, uh, we'll talk later. See you later, buddy. See you, bud. All right. So, yeah. So if Trev is still in here, Hey young, how's it going? I got to give, I've got to give um, young Pei Chang a, uh, a big shout out right now. He was awesome to get this bottle right here. This was something I had really been looking forward to. And he, um, he really came through on, on that for me big time. So I'm, I'm looking forward to cracking this one open very soon. Um, and then one other kind of quick thing, what I'll be doing, not next week, because I'll be with uh, Matt from Whiskey Crusaders on, on Monday and Tuesday. But um, so maybe the following week, I'll do a, a blind flight of four or five different single barrels of this. So I was able to get a few people that were nice enough to send me different samples of those just to see what, if any difference there really are from some of the barrels, some of the different barrels. So that's something I'm, I'm really looking forward to. So, all right. If, uh, if Trev is still in here, um, I guess, give me a, uh, a total count of how many people were in the super chat and we'll, uh, we'll do a, uh, we'll do a random, uh, we'll do a random giveaway tonight or a random, uh, uh, pick. So, um, all right. Did I miss one before? If I did, Jeff, sorry about that. Must have overlooked that. I apologize. I get to talking and my arms are flying all over the place and I, I must. Oh, there it is. All right. Sorry about that. Let me pop it back up here real quick. Yeah, she, <laughs> she probably did. She probably did think I was a tater. And I knew because we were there like late. I mean, the chances of getting anything, which it wasn't like that, even going back a couple years ago, uh, which I had gone a couple times and was able to get them. They always seemed to have them every time I'd go, but uh, they didn't um, they didn't do anything. So um, thanks, DC. Um, what do we got here? Kleiners, thank my man. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. All right. So one through one through 22. So let's see. Um, Trev, why don't you, since you were nice enough to, to do this tonight, why don't you give me a number between one and 22 and then let me know uh, who the winner is and uh, we will make sure to get this stuff uh, sent off to you. So again, it's going to be a, uh, a sample of, or excuse me, one box it's the cigarclub.com uh, customs, which is um, an incredible thing. So, I mean, if you haven't subscribed to them, you know, go check out what they have. If you're a cigar person, by, by all means, um, it's incredible what those guys have going on and the passion and everything. So, you'll get that, the five cigars, a, a two ounce sample of the Discovery, and I'll crack open the early times. And then at some other point, and another one, I'll do a, a giveaway of, of one of the early times uh, bottles as well. So, um, all right. Did I miss it here? I don't think I did. Um, so let's see here. Once Trev gives me the number between one and 22. Uh, no, Kleiner, I didn't get it yet. I think they're actually shipping out the end of this week is what Dave told me. So it sounds like uh, we'll be getting those very soon. So, um, did I, hopefully I didn't miss where Trev gave me the number. Um, Stanley, uh, in the link in this video, you can go and, uh, you can check out the merchant stuff there. So, oh, sorry, between one and uh, 23. Uh, so we got a different one in there. So, 
Um, yes, Richie, he is a Boston Terrier. He'll be 14 this, this September. So, um, all right. So as soon as we get the number between one and 23 or one and 24, number 13, which is my lucky number. And, uh, who was number 13, Trev? Who do you have as number 13? Chris Beaton, my man, you did. Uh, you were looking sharp as, uh, as get out in that. So Keith Schmidt. So Keith, um, send me an email at um, mybourbonjourney one at gmail.com. You should be able to find it. Link in the in the description below. But again, mybourbonjourney one at gmail.com. So check uh, that out. So yeah, you'll get the uh, the cigar clubs or cigarclub.com uh, customs, and uh, you'll get the two ounce uh, sample of the Discovery Batch uh, Four and a sample of the uh, Early Times Bottled and Bond. So this one I'm super excited to actually get into. It's it's nothing I ever will see probably in in my area. So um, let me do this. Congrats, Keith. That's awesome. And let's see what else we have. So, so anyway, there you have it. So congrats. And I got to say a big thanks to, uh, to, uh, to Dave for, uh, contributing the, the, the cigar clubs custom. I mean, it's, it's something that only you can only get through, uh, subscribing to, to their service. Um, and it's a, a great one. Uh, Kleiners, he can, uh, he can attest to that. He's also a, a member of cigarclub.com and they just, they're, they're just passionate. They're great guys and, and all of that. So John T, how's it going, buddy? Um, so there you have it. So that was a little recap of, of what we have going on. And again, um, I know we had talked about it before, but as far as getting involved in some of the store picks, you know, in order to basically be kind of guaranteed something, if you, if you do entertain or want to become a, a patron, it gets you into the running for, um, you know, having a shot at that because that's where we're going to release everything uh, first. And within a certain amount of time, if for some reason they, they don't sell, then we'll, we'll release them to the public. But um, I think we're, we're going to get rid of most, if not all, probably to, to all of our patrons and stuff. So um, quick, a uh, couple things in terms of what's coming up. So next Monday and Tuesday, like I said before, I will be on Matt from Whiskey Crusaders channel Monday night and then Tuesday over on mine. And he's got a bunch of samples that we're going to be going through doing a lot of really, really fun things. And um, yeah, that'll be, that'll be a heck of a night. I think he's going to hit me with a lot of Texas whiskey stuff. So um, it'll be, it should be a, a fun one. So yeah, the, the discovery four and three, I mean, so far, I think Kelsey, in order to give this thing a fair shake, I want to let it open up a little bit to try to judge this one so far off of a neck pour it's probably not super fair to it, but so far I, I really like, I really like the four. I like the, the nice dark, heavy fruits and stuff on this one uh, so far. So, um, and then let's see the following week. So not, not this next Tuesday, but the following one, like I said before, I'm going to, to be doing a blind flight of, I think it's going to be five different single barrels of this bad boy right here. So, uh, that will be a really fun blind to see whose bottle or barrel or whatever bottle comes out on on top. And I, I was curious when I tried it. I mean, it's a super special rye whiskey. And if anyone knows or has had a chance to try that Jack Daniels barrel proof single barrel rye whiskey, I mean, it is a, it's a special, special whiskey. And again, Young Pei Chang, I, I can't say thank you enough for for helping me out with that. I, I greatly appreciate it. So thank you uh, for that. And Sean Kane for, for sending uh, also a sample of this. He'll be entered. Jared Riley will be entered. Um, Brian Anderson will be entered into it. I'm forgetting somebody. I know that. So, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun one. It'll be interesting to see what the differences are in the, in the different, you know, barrels, because we all know these single barrels will really vary 
the proofs are somewhat simpler within a or um, similar, but around maybe it looks like about three proof points off in in either way. So there's not a big variant. So there shouldn't be that, but there should be a few different things that that kind of um, you know stand out in, amongst uh, those those different barrels. So. And then after that, hopefully, as the weather starts getting nicer, I'm going to start to introduce, hopefully get Klein on, get some of the guys from CigarClub.com on and do a little more cigar whiskey pairing type of things. Um, yes, Jared is uh, one of the guys that was gracious enough to send me a couple of different barrels. So thanks, Jared. I, I greatly appreciate that. So hopefully everybody will tune in. So um ernie so yeah it's it is a spectacular whiskey i mean when i first tried it i mean it was just you a lot of us know when you try that that special whiskey you know at that moment uh when when you've you've tried something that's just just special so it, it was all all of that so yeah some good stuff so you know i appreciate everybody uh tuning in tonight had a great time and i'm glad there were so many people that were interested in uh, in a trip to Kentucky, but you know, I I wanted to share just a little bit with you guys that we've been sharing with some of the patrons as to you know what it is that we've got going on and what we're trying to do for everybody. So yeah, I mean, we're we're really trying to you know just be out there with with all of you guys more and try to you know just get more collaborations, get people together, and that's why we were talking before about trying to get a um, kind of a collaboration with Bardstown Bourbon Company, get that special room for, for a few people who would be interested in, in making that trip and hanging out. And, and, and we want to make sure that whatever that event is, that it's going to be uh, something special and, and, and all of that. So we were thinking, trying to get, you know, two or three different special whiskeys and either a lunch or dinner involved, and then we'll figure out costs and, and all of that for things. But we want to make it something that you're just not going to go anywhere in your local area and be able to get. We're going to make sure that it's something that you more than likely will only be able to get there. We'll give you more details as we kind of get some of those things uh, set up. So, all right. So before I get off, anyone have any, uh, any questions or anything along those lines? You want to know anything about the... Uh, the picks or anything along those lines, I can uh, answer a few questions before I jump off and uh, go from there. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate that. So yeah, it's just one of those things where, you know, we're just having a fun time. We want to bring you guys uh, some really cool things. So yeah, those, uh, <laughs> those dusty things. Yeah. That menu uh, is, is ridiculous. Now, again, if you're on an expense account, it can be a pretty, a pretty sweet deal. If someone's willing to open up their, uh, their, their checkbook and, and buy you some different things, but uh, it gets a little pricey. So, all right, Sean, what do you got here, Scott? When do you do the four gate pick? Put me on the list. Hey, we're trying. And I talked to Bill and Bob and everybody over there and, and we're, we're trying to get it. We know that it's going to be kind of a pricey one. It seems like it's probably going to be in that 225 ish range. So we know that there's not going to be a lot of people that are going to want it just from a price point. Um, but whatever it is we do, we're, we're going to try to make sure it's, it's the best of, of whatever. And as you guys are fully aware of, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge, huge four gate fan. I love what they do and everything that they, that they put out there is different, unique quality, which is the, the main thing. So um, JG, thanks, brother. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, we're we're looking forward. We're looking forward to putting something like that together to to get everybody uh together. So there he is, right here. So and there may be something we kind of chatted when we were uh, down there on Thursday with uh, the man behind Modern Thirst, uh, Bill Straub. Um. Maybe try to do a little event. I don't want to like say more about what that may be, but uh, I think uh, maybe down the road there could be a little little four gate thing or something like that coming. So yeah, Sean, thanks for uh, for being in on that. So we we think whatever it would be, uh, 
you know, try to try to get some stuff. So yeah, we want to, we want to work with good people and, you know, people that support us and get you guys stuff that's different and, and unique. And, you know, there's a lot of people who don't have an opportunity to get uh foregate. And if we can do something to, to help that out and get, get people something and something special, that's what, uh, that's what we want to, what we want to do. So thanks brother. I appreciate that very much. Yeah, hopefully we can uh, we can figure a little something out. So I know we had talked a little bit about this just to kind of recap this one. So I had a chance to, um, I guess, real quick when I was visiting with Bill on on Thursday, my wife and I we we stopped and, and met with him, and this Kelvin collaboration three, and this isn't just coming from someone who's a huge fan of of which I am. A lot of everyone knows that. But for me, this is probably one of their best whiskeys that they've put out, period. I mean, the complexity that the sherry and, and rum that this thing has on it is, is fantastic. And fortunately, I was able to try from a bottle that had already been opened and it had some airtime and, and all of that. So the the richness and complexity and what that sherry influence had was it just made it to me again another one of those whiskeys that's special and as soon as it's released i'll be getting a, a backup to this guy because i'm sure the bottle that you know that it gets open will be plowed through pretty pretty quickly so it's a it's a fantastic one now again the release was um i thought bill said the middle or end of of april so it's coming pretty pretty quickly so i know you can get it handful of states it'll be sent to and then also through um bourbon outfitters and sealbach.com uh, so those are the places where you'll be able to uh to get those so um i mean trust me i mean if you like a full-bodied complex finished bourbon i mean that that has it it's it's fantastic so uh that will be batch 12 um sean so nope uh, 11 was the um ruby ruby rye springs that was their uh finished 95 5 um um mgp finished um rye whiskey so which was incredible as well so that was the the one that was finished in the uh, Ruby port uh, casks, but um, did I say just love the name bourbon outfitters? Yeah, it's a, that's a good one. So uh, you can get them, you can get them there. And again, it won't be released until um, uh, sometime in April. So stay tuned on, on that. So there you have it. So there was a little recap. Um, yeah. We, <laughs> one other thing when we were at, when we were at bills and <laughs> I feel bad, but when we were sitting out back, the rain was coming down like I mean cats and dogs. It was, it was absolutely, <laughs> it was absolutely ridiculous. So we put the we put a little tent up. <laughs> Bill was nice enough to put a uh, a little tent up over us. Whatever one of those like little tailgate things, and the weather just destroyed it. And I I feel bad. I feel bad for that. I think I'm gonna have to have my wife replace it for him. So it was her idea. So I'm gonna blame I'm gonna blame the I'll blame the wife on that one. So. Um, yeah, split stave. Let's see. What do you have the split stave? Yeah. I, I like, I get, a, I get it a lot. People ask me with this since I've, I think I've reviewed every single one of them, but they, I get asked all the time. How do, how does one compare? You know, it's really, that's a difficult question. Cause once you have a secondary finishing that changes, you know, from what the other is finished in, the flavor profile of it, you know, changes, you know, significantly. So to try to compare this to Kelvin collaboration two, which um, I believe are all, all a rum cast. So all the Kelvin collaborations have some kind of rum and a different in a, in a secondary finishing like uh, 12 will be Sherry uh, six, which was batch six was a Kelvin collaboration two. That was a, uh, that was cognac. So, which was, incredible as well. So I think it finished number two for me in my 2020 whiskey of the year. I mean, it was, a. Uh, I I think it was what that, what it was. Ah, 
I don't remember. All I know is it was damn good. So, but uh, yeah. So let's see what else we have here. Um, oh, Texas gets a lot of Texas gets a lot of stuff. So, um, what else we have here? Yeah, fantastic one. <laughs> the canopy lived a full life. Yes, it did. We ended it that night, and that was it was some nasty it was some nasty weather. So, but uh, we had a great great time. Probably a little probably a little too good. Getting to taste, uh, being lucky enough to to taste some incredible whiskeys was uh, was a fun opportunity. That's that's for sure. So I can't I can't thank them enough for for that. So yeah, we sat there, and Todd Ritter was there. His wife was there. Uh, bills. So yeah, we had a, we had a, we had a good time. So, um, but yeah, maybe down the road, we'll, we'll get a little, a uh, little four gate event or something like that put together and, and be able to, uh, to share that with, uh, with you guys. Cause I think the people who haven't had it or have had maybe a couple of them, I, I my honest opinion is people are truly missing out on some, some, uh, <laughs> some crazy, uh, some crazy good whiskey. Yeah. And Todd, Todd sent me this shortly after that. So Scott's new tagline is it's about the journey, not, or no, yeah, <laughs> it's about the journey, not the devastation, which was good. It was, it was destroyed. It was, it was pretty good. So did a number of the weather, did a number on that. So, um, yeah, no, yeah, there was a, uh, no, no four gate was harmed in the, uh, the drinking, uh, at that point. So we, we made sure to secure, all of the bottles that were that were there so it was uh we made sure to no water was added to to any of that so that was awesome uh what else do we have todd that is a good that is a good tagline right there all right so that's it i think i'll probably uh wrap it up so some good stuff coming everybody thank you so much for uh all the super chats tonight and entering dave thank you so much for um, you know, donating the, the cigar clubs, uh, cigar club.com customs. That's an awesome thing. If you haven't checked them out, make sure you do so. Um, I can put a link in the description below later that will get you 30% off of your, uh, first order, uh, from them. So it's, uh, it's, and they're passionate, you know, check out, Check out Foregate. They they do a great job. Again, Sealbach, um, Bourbon Outfitters, they will have their stuff. There's probably some stuff that's still available in terms of some of their other batches, all good in their own different right. Um, and then the uh, Bardstown Bourbon Company, this is the batch four. And I mean, it's already, it's already good. So I'm really looking forward to this bad boy kind of opening up, you know, great ages, on this one again this was what was this 15 yeah 50 or yeah 13 year 15 year 10 year i mean the amount of uh nice ages that are on those bourbons is is fantastic so um great stuff there uh yeah we did lose a we did lose a cork um i do have that bottle with no cork so uh anyway so yeah next week like i said before we will be over on Matt from Whiskey Crusaders channel Monday night, going through some different uh, samples. I think it's going to be kind of a dual night. So the, the concept will be pretty much the same. I think we're going to try to drink through and Matt, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it'll be mostly some or all Texas whiskey. I don't know if there's going to be anything else. You guys all know Matt with, uh, he can hit you with anything. I mean, he's like a, a liquor store. I mean, he's got everything under the sun. So it, it's crazy. You never know exactly what it is. You're going to, what you're going to get. Hey, Eric, how's it going? So yeah, so that will be next week. And then the following week after that, like I said, will be the Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof rye whiskey, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Scotch and Texas. So, um, I think we're probably going to do scotch, uh, well, you can tell me what well, doesn't matter to me. We can do scotch on your channel tech or Texas on mine makes no difference. Um, it'll be, it'll be fun, fun either way. So, but yeah, I mean, the guys that sent samples of the, the Jack Daniels, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate that. It's going to be interesting to see how 
they all kind of shake up and how they play against each other because we all know how different single barrels can be. And even though they're very similar in proof from one barrel to the next, uh, you never know, you never know what it is that you're, you're going to get. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to, you know, seeing how those whole things, uh, really, uh, really shake out. So, um, yeah, so I think that's, let me reset this camera here a little bit. There we go. That's maybe a little bit better. I don't know. So 24 of each type. Holy moly. All right. It's going to, it's going to be crazy. So, um, no, Eric, I don't, I don't, I don't hate Texas whiskey. It's just a different, it's just a different profile. I've had some that I've really enjoyed and, and some that I haven't, it's completely different. And, you know, there's not many things that, that I hate. Um, I mean, I make no bones about it. I mean, I'm not a huge scotch guy. I mean, the single grain malted barley is not necessarily my thing, but you know, it doesn't have to be. So, uh, you know, I, I make no bones about it. I mean, it's just not necessarily my thing. I appreciate a good high proof bourbon, single malt, some of those things, American single malt maybe is, are pretty good. There's just something different about those versus some of the scotches or whatever. But, um, I, I don't know why, but it, it is, there's just something with, with scotch that I don't know. It, it is what it is that. And I guess maybe if I got into it a little bit more and, and kind of gave it more of a, a fair shake, maybe it would be something that, um, that I would enjoy, but I don't need another rabbit hole to go down. I, I spend enough money on American whiskey. So, all right, everyone. Thanks so much for, uh, for tuning in. And again, next week, Monday and Tuesday, we'll be over a Monday night whiskey crusaders channel Tuesday, my channel. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to, to having it. So thanks everybody for all the super chats and entering tonight. Um, looking forward to, to next week and, and kind of getting into that, but more importantly, thanks everybody for, for tuning in again. I uh, greatly appreciate you, uh, spending a little bit of time on a Tuesday night with me as always. And, uh, so there you have it. Good stuff. So with that being said, remember it's about the journey and not the destination. See you guys next Tuesday. Cheers.